independent version of the Salem TV News Break. I'm your host, Marie Sanders. And with me today is Pastor Develius Bright, pastor of Salem United Methodist Church. Thank you very much, Marie. Welcome, Pastor. Well, thank you for welcoming me. Yes, yes. It's great to have you with me on today. I'm usually by myself, but it's great to have you. Well, we must address this. We know that we are in a crisis right now with the coronavirus. So tell me, what can the church do or what are we doing put in place to help with this? Well, there are a lot of things that we can do, Marie, and there's a lot of things that we put in place. A few weeks ago, I started planning with the Health, Education, and Wellness Committee to make sure that we had a contingency plan for just this such occurrence. Fortunately, we were able to quickly uh, get that plan enacted, and this is what it looks like. The Center for Disease Control said that we cannot gather more than 10 people at one time. That means that worship service, Bible study, Sunday school, Tuesday Bible study, even dinner with the pastor will have to be postponed, postponed or canceled for the foreseeable future. But that doesn't mean that the office will be closed. So from Tuesday to Thursday, from 10 to 2, the church office will be open and we will be busy. One of the things that we're going to be doing is preparing worship uh, material for the worship service and recording the worship service during the week. That pre-recorded service will be made available for the entire congregation to enjoy at the same time at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. So the first thing that we can do is to encourage each other to attend worship service together. This time you may be attending on your cell phone, maybe on your television or your laptop, but there are some members, let's face it, who don't have a cell phone, who don't have internet connection, and they're going to need your help watching and enjoying worship service together. Just because the service isn't happening in the sanctuary at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning does not mean that church is canceled and you cannot take that attitude. I expect everyone to be there online on our YouTube, Salem TV YouTube channel. That Salem TV YouTube channel has a lot of great information. It has some uh, Sunday school reports. It has our archive of uh, old news breaks and uh, we'll have the news news breaks on there. But um, that's how we can move forward in the future. It just so happened that all of this happened immediately after Salem had invested in our audiovisual ministry. Now we have the capacity to do something that many people won't be able to do. And so I look forward to us learning how to do church in a new way, Marie. Exactly. Like you said, I like what you said, that church isn't canceled but we're just doing it in a different way and it's still available. Now, Pastor, can you tell us again, how can we uh, go online to view uh, the service on Sunday? Because we want to make sure everyone is aware of how to do that. I certainly can. Go to YouTube, type in Salem TV, all words, then the words video streaming ministry. That should take you to the Salem TV page. Now, the YouTube page. Some of you have Facebook, and you know that there's a Salem TV Facebook page. If you click on any of the videos of the recent, tele, of the recent worship services or the news breaks on that Facebook page, it will take you to the Salem TV YouTube channel. Look on that channel and subscribe to it. Like it. Make it a favorite on your uh, list of YouTube channels. That way you'll be able to get to it over and over again because every Sunday that's where worship will be happening. That's great. That's great. And I'd like to also encourage those on the Facebook page and YouTube, would you share it? Because there are some churches that may not have online services. So, you know, at this time, I know for myself, we need a word from the Lord. So share this with your friends. Mm -hmm. You know, there's an old tradition of visiting other churches. Right. Now that other churches are actually not meeting, they have a chance to visit with us. Exactly. And we can show them how Salem is prepared to worship the Lord 
into the year 2020 and beyond. So please do invite your friends and families uh, and also those church members who you know are not going to be able to get to this on their own. Yes. Uh, the Center for Disease Control said that we shouldn't gather in groups more than 10. But if you have five people in your home to watch this show, I'm sure yes. that uh, you will all be blessed and you can follow along with the liturgy together. Remember, the scripture says that those who worship God must worship God in spirit and in truth. If we're truthful to ourselves and we are really worshipful in a spirit-filled way, I know God will continue to bless us as richly as he would if we were in the sanctuary with each other on Sunday morning. Thank you so much, Pastor, for this information. And we're just praising God that all of these things were already implemented and we could just go right along and not skip a beat, as they say. Thank you so much for joining me. You're so welcome. How about the news break? Yes. On last week, our Hugh Health, Education, and Wellness had their crawfish cooker drawing. Let's take a look at that video now. All right. All right. Are you ready? Go back. Yes, but somebody else has to do the Come on. Yay, Gumpy Shell. Yeah. Close your eyes and just put your hand in. Take off your glasses. Just one. Let's Bryant. Let's Bryant. Let's Bryant and let's see who shows them the winning ticket. Iberia Smith. to Les Bryant, the winner of the crawfish cooker. And also congratulations to Iberia Smith for selling that winning ticket. Well, we know that the coronavirus is going on and we're in a crisis right now. With me, I have Sister Debria Spears, who is our chairperson of the Staff Parish Relations Committee here at Salem. Hi, Debria, how are you today? Doing great, you? I'm doing well, doing well. Thank you so much for joining me. Now we know that we're in this crisis right now. So can you tell me, what can Salem do as a church family to help each other during this trying time? Well, the thing we can do is look out for one another. Yes. If you know of someone that needs water, eggs, milk, whatever, and they can't get to the store, we can get it to them. Also, the church is open from 10 to 2, Tuesday through Thursday. On those days, we're welcome to come in and pray, pick up envelopes for tithes, offering, whatever you would like to donate money towards. Also, the, uh, the pastor is going to get with the United Methodist men and Urshes to see about helping out with distributing things to people that can't get out. That's great, that's so. great. So tell me this, Sister uh, Debria, uh, do you need volunteers for this to help distribute these things to those that can't get out? Because we know there are several members of Salem that maybe can't come to the church and pick up their worship packets or their offering envelopes. So do we need volunteers for that? Well, like I said, we're looking for United Methodist men, the Urshas. Also, with distributing, like I said, the church will be open. So if you able, come by and pick up. And while you're picking up for those that can't pick up, pick up for them in delivery. Right. right. Because we are a family here. Right. Amen. And church really is in our heart. That's right. We're our brother and sister's keeper. This yes. is what God intends for us Amen. to do, to be there for one another. Amen. And that's what we're going to do as Salem family. Thank you so much. No, church isn't closed, but we're just finding a different way to do things. 
Thank you so much for joining me on today. Hello, welcome back to the Salem News Brighton. I'm the Valdez Bright, the pastor, and I'm here with our friend and your friend, the minister, Benny Smith. Benny wears a lot of hats here at Salem. He's not only a certified lay minister, he's a, a liturgist during the worship service. He teaches Bible study on Wednesday night. He um, uh, cuts fresh fruit for Sunday school every Sunday morning. And uh, he is also the chairperson of our board of trustees. Brother Benny Smith also is the associate principal at West Orange Star Elementary School. Brother Smith, you know that we're in this crisis. People are stuck at home with their kids. Um, we want to encourage our parents not to abuse their children while they're in such close contact with one another. <laughs> Tell me, what has the school district done to help parents during this time of crisis? Well, uh, we are in crisis and it's very important for young people to stay engaged educationally. Uh, we have a program called Imagine Learning uh, that is available for parents uh, and students to use during this time that we are not together at the school building. Uh, we would encourage you to visit the website, westorangecodecisd.net, and you can engage yourselves uh, and your student with learning and reading and in mathematics each and every day, uh, which is what we would encourage you anyway as a parent, that uh, as you progress, that you keep your routines the same, that kids would be involved in educational activity throughout the day. Uh, mathematics and reading are very important skills for early elementary students. Uh, our campus is kindergarten through fifth grade, so we would encourage you to do reading and mathematics each and every day. Hmm. That's a great idea, and it's good to maintain that sense of normalcy by keeping a regular routine. And it sounds like West Orange Star Cove School District is doing exactly what Salem is doing, even though uh, they're not showing up in person. School isn't canceled. They're just learning another way of doing it. That's another way of doing it. And we would still encourage parents to keep the bedtime the same. We would encourage you to wake the kids up at the same time so it will be normal and abnormalcy leads to other things and we want kids to be in a normal situation so up at 5 10 mm -hmm. uh, in bed by 8 10 mm -hmm. and things will happen very good for those students who and parents who encourage their kids to do that wow it sounds like there's a lesson there for the church also because what we're trying to do is to maintain a sense of normalcy in our spiritual life and, and our walk in Christian discipleship. Um, as the Sunday, as the Wednesday Bible um, study class leader, mm -hmm. um, what type of, um, I would say, distance learning should we be practicing as it concerns Bible study during this time? Well, currently we are uh, involved in our Wednesday night Bible study uh, in the book of Matthew. Very good book. I think uh, we started off in a very good fashion. And what we're doing is, and I won't necessarily uh, lead each and every one of the sessions, but we've invited others to uh, lead in the Bible study. Uh, I think Jesus was a good example of that in that he taught his disciples and then he allowed them the opportunity to go out and to teach others what they have been taught. And so we are following in the uh, line of the great master teacher, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, that's exactly what we in Methodist circles call empowering the, the disciples for ministry. And so those uh, disciples and 
uh, Bible study here at Salem are being empowered uh, through your leadership and through their own dedication to the word. And I want to thank you for helping us to maintain this sense of normalcy. Please make sure that you keep your schedule straight, that you um, um, uh, continue to get up and go to bed on time. And for all, uh, please, by all means, come to church at the regular time online on the, Sa on the Salem TV YouTube channel. Church will be happening every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. And there's going to be this brand new broadcast called the Extended um, Salem TV News Break which will bring you more information like this uh, from people like our friend, Brother Benny Smith. See you there. That was really interesting, and I'm glad that we all have an opportunity to learn how to survive this time of close contact with our children. Thank you, Brother Benny Smith. Now I want to introduce you to a friend of mine. We've been knowing each other for a long time. Long time. It's getting close to 20 years now. Oh, Can you believe that? Crazy. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Lonnie Russo is the pastor of First United Methodist Church here in Orange, Texas. We're old Perkins classmates together. I love Lonnie like a sister. We've uh, kept up with each other over the years. And I was so happy to find out that she was here in Orange. And welcome to Salem United Methodist Church, Lane. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's great to be here. This is amazing to be part of this wonderful channel of yours and to get to experience it and be here with you. And so thank you for inviting me. You're very welcome. I uh, have a couple of questions for okay. you. Um, first, this coronavirus is, um, is uh, serious. We are uh, changing the way that we are doing church and um, I just wondered how the saints over at First United Methodist Church are dealing with all of the changes. Well, we are learning, learning, learning um, like crazy, trying to figure out all this technology that you obviously are way ahead of us on. And so uh, thank you for your advice to us as well. Um, but we are not going to have worship in, in the sanctuary, I mean, in the chapel or in our praise center this week. We did last week, and I announced to them that we'll be uh, taking a couple of weeks off at least. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're scrambling to get ready to go online. Right. Did our first Bible study last night um, through our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And so that was really great. We actually even had 57 people show up. So it was really, but, but it's all a learning curve. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just church different is yeah. what it is, but we're excited at the possibilities. Yeah. For sure. And in fact, we've been talking about this for the longest time in, in seminary circles about what the next generation is going to do and how we're going to integrate this online society with uh, the faith-based community. Exactly, exactly. How can we make it? And so we're, we're seeing that, whether we, uh, we're ready for it or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> here, here it comes. Here it comes, here it comes. That reminds me of a, of a, a tough time in your life. Um, uh, Lonnie is a cancer survivor. And uh, we were all, uh, all of our Facebook friends were, were praying for her as she went through her ordeal. She was very open about it and posted a lot and kept us up to date with her progress. And as you can see, she is um, fully recovered, totally in remission and serving the local church again. Um, but Lonnie, that must have been a trying time for you that um, uh, made you have to develop some new tools to handle that type of stress. It definitely was. I mean, I don't think you're ever prepared for anything like that. I don't think that uh, even though we're people of faith and we know about prayer and all of that, um, for me, it was a new connection. People say, oh, you were an inspiration. I mean, mm -hmm. but I just felt like I was doing what God was telling me to do each and every day, just mm -hmm. being obedient. I mean, and I think that's kind of what we have to develop during this trying time as well, Absolutely. is to be obedient. And that's how I felt like it prepared me to just walk, go to my appointments, show up, do what they told me to do as best mm -hmm. I could, mm -hmm. and um, God just totally blessed it. Mm -hmm. So uh, prayer life, obviously very strong, staying in contact with people, um, reaching out when I needed. Right. I, had, I had a group of friends that I could reach out to and knew that they'd be there for me, um, that isn't all that I put, you know, I didn't put all that up on the Facebook, but I mean, 
having those people that when you're feeling like you're lost, that you can really reach out to. They're your trusted people, and um, they'll cry with you, and yet they'll lift you back up. And um, it, that's really one of the things. Another thing that I've been trying to cultivate with my folks right now is a sense of gratitude. Right. Um, and so we're in the midst of a study by Reverend Adam Hamilton oh, of the Church right. of the Resurrection mm -hmm. called The Walk. Mm -hmm. And he talked about in one of the early lessons about creating a gratitude journal. And uh -huh. then as I've been, you know, just going on this walk these last few weeks of this developing worse and worse, I've seen that in several places. So I kind of, when I start to see it in several places unrelated, right. I think that might be something God's trying to tell us. Absolutely. And that when we find a blessing in something, when we say thank you to God and we find what we're grateful for, it does help our health, our right. physical health as well as our spiritual health. Right. And so finding those places to be grateful, um, I think are really important, especially at a time like this. Right. Lifting people up is... Um, what gratitude does, you know, um, they say that your gratitude will determine your altitude. That's right. That's right. It's <laughs> and, true. It's um, true. And we definitely need it to be lifted up. And thank you for coming by to share your beautiful smile, your wonderful ministry, and your faith with us. And I know that the, the, the saints over at the First United Methodist Church are are pleased to have you, and I'm so, so happy to have you. Well, again. yeah, it's wonderful to be here, and I hope this won't be our last time that we can do this together. Uh, we'll see what God's got in mind. You know, that's what we just, we learned that in school, right? Absolutely. We're going to pay attention <laughs> to where God's at, where God's already at work, and what can we do. So, right. uh, together, uh, and with all of your wonderful folks here, uh, it's, it's, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. God is with us. We, we, we are not will. alone, right? Amen. Well, thank you so much, thank Lonnie Riso, pastor of Salem, uh, uh, not Salem, <laughs> pastor of Oranges, First United Methodist Church. Thank you very much. Thank you. There's no pain. Jesus can't feel no heart that he cannot heal. All things work according
remember that God only wants a chance to use you. No matter what it is, we're all going through right now. You don't have to be depressed. It's only one a chance to use you. Well, that's all for this week. Until next time, stay faithful.